What's up everybody, Keir Gomes here and welcome back. This is actually something that I've gotten a few requests to do and it's one that I've been excited to do uh, since the new year began. Crazy to think that we're already about a week in and uh, I have so many plans for this year, it's crazy. And in mid 2019, I did an episode on the channel and it was uh, the perfect brick. It was basically 12 decks of my favorite playing cards, like if I could only have one brick of cards, what they would be. And that video was fairly well received, so I thought it would be only appropriate since 2019 is officially over to do a perfect brick 2019 edition. Basically what we're gonna be doing today is taking a look at my top 12 because it's a brick, <laughs> favorite decks of 2019. Before we get started, please do drop a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, intro. Let's go. All right, now there are a couple of uh, restrictions here, a couple ground rules that I chose to follow, not just to be fair, uh, but also to avoid having like 12 of the same brand in my perfect brick. <laughs> so some of the rules when I was putting this together were, I would only choose one deck like per brand. So for example, I wouldn't have uh, two Fontaine decks or two Gemini decks or you know, whatever, which was really difficult because some of the brands that I love had uh, tons of releases this year and some of those decks would have been in my lineup uh, or just taken up the whole brick. So only one deck per brand. The other rule is I'm not including anything that was on Kickstarter in 2019 that won't be fulfilled until this year. So, so for example, I'm not including things like the Black Roses Hotel deck because one, that would obviously be a uh, serious bias but also because uh, the cards won't be received by me until 2020, so uh, those are gonna be considered a 2020 deck. And of course, there will be some time at the end for honorable mentions of 2019 and decks that you can expect to see in 2020. One of which being this bad boy right here. <laughs> That's all you get for now, but I will be reviewing the new OPC deck very soon. All right, now the last rule is that this brick is not in any particular order. It's just 12 of my favorite decks that uh, were released in 2019, so number one. For number one, uh, this is a deck that I recently reviewed. It is the uh, Superfly Dazzle playing cards by Gemini Dex. This was, I would say, probably my favorite release by Gemini in 2019, although they did release a ton of decks. This one, I would have to say, uh, stood out the most. It's the one that I probably use the most. This is one of those decks that just is aesthetically pleasing. Right out of the box, the back design looks really good. I love the orange and black contrast. And as most of you know, I'm a big fan of the type of customizing that Gemini usually does on their Superfly decks. This deck is no exception. The faces are brilliant, the back design is beautiful, and the handling of these cards is absolutely incredible. Everything about it. So let's take a look at number two. Number two, we are doing the Slicers by Organic Playing Cards. I'm not counting the new Snackers deck because uh, even though I received it in 2019, it, it won't be released until 2020, so I'm not counting that one. This was probably my favorite release by OPC this year. Um, a close second would be the Snackers V1, the yellow ones. I love those cards, but the thing I love about the Slicers deck is the intense color contrast of red and green on the back design. I love the amount of effort that went into keeping every single court card related to apples in some way. And as well, I love the color customization on the face to match the overall theme of the deck. Not to mention, just in general, the tuck box is exquisite. I love that OPC takes so much time to make the tuck box uh, reminiscent of the theme of the deck. Doesn't get much better than this in terms of cardistry decks, I think. I really, really like the way that this deck came out. I use it all the time when I'm practicing. It feels good. This is actually the same cardstock that the Slow Hands deck is gonna be printed on. So, so let that be a testament to how much I love uh, uncrushed, B stock, love it. But what's shaken for number three? This one was really hard for me because it's one of my favorite brands and it's designed by one of my favorite designers of all time. But ultimately this specific one stood out to me the most and it's one that I really enjoy. And that is the Orbit Cardistry Con V1 reprints. I love the idea of reprints of classic decks, but especially when they've been upgraded or modified. And in this case, I love that they chose to do the exact V1 design, but with thinner borders, which match today's standards a little bit better. But as well, I love the customization on the faces of the cards, which was something that you didn't see in the original V1. I'm also a huge fan of this card stock, and just as well, this is a deck that I would use every single day if I had enough of them. 
I mean, I really like the V1. Uh, I have it up here somewhere, but uh, the thinner borders on the V1 just really, really stand out. I love that it's that classic Orbit design. The V7 and the V7 Parallel are actually decks that I love and I use all the time because I have so many, but uh, this is a very special deck because I only have the one and uh, it was an exclusive Cardistry Con 19 release. Felt really honored uh, that I was able to get my hands on one courtesy of Doc's playing cards and I could not be more thrilled. It actually was the only Orbit deck that I was missing. So super glad I got it. All right, so that's three down. What is number four? You probably knew this was coming, but number four is the Jerry's Nuggets. These are the modern edition printed by USPCC um, in collaboration with the Expert Playing Card Company. This is kind of one of those daily use decks. Um, I perform magic with this deck a lot. Uh, it's one that I just enjoy looking at. I love the red color and the blue color. I love the standard faces with the vintage feel on the courts. I absolutely love the card stock. This is just a deck that in general um, I could use for the rest of my life. It's seriously hard to beat um, a classic that's been reborn with modern standards. So very similar to the Orbit reprint, uh, this deck is just, it's, it's perfect. It's simple in all the ways that I want. It's a casino style deck, which is pretty much my favorite. Jerry's Nuggets reprints, absolutely in my perfect break of 2019. But what's number five? All right, number five is the Hydrogen deck by Elemental Playing Cards. Um, now there is a partial bias here that I'm just gonna address. Obviously, uh, I love Nick's work, which is why uh, I chose to collaborate with him on the Slow Hands deck. Um, but also this deck is special to me in a lot of ways. It was the first Kickstarter trailer that I did. Uh, it is partially the reason for a lot of the other work that I've been able to do for other companies. But it's also just a deck that I love. I wouldn't have done the trailer if I didn't love the design, so. I love the black and white colorway of this deck. Also with that red contrast, I think it looks really good just in the middle there. I absolutely love the Dan and Dave style customization on the court cards. I love that the Jokers were hand drawn by Nick, which gives it kind of its own personality. And in general, this deck handles like a dream. Uh, and I'm so thrilled that I got to be a part of this project. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so moving on to deck number six. Deck number six is the Fontaine and the Good Company playing cards by Fontaine. Now this one was particularly hard and the reason that it was so hard is because Fontaine released a lot of decks this year. They had six decks that came out with the Futures, most of which I have and eh, I like some of them, but they also did the V2 and V3 guest decks this year, uh, which were pretty awesome. And they did the Fontaine chocolate deck. As a Fontaine lover myself, it was really difficult, but what it really came down to for me was uh, the color and the face cards in this deck. I love, love, love the turquoise feel of this deck. I absolutely cannot get enough of the back design. I love that it kind of has this flux style pattern in the back too to give it some texture, which is uh, different for most Fontaine decks. And I love the comic booky style of the face cards and the court cards. I think it was so well done. And for Fontaine to do a fully custom uh, deck of cards is not something that you see every day. As well, I love the feel of this deck and it's one that I can use every day. Now Fontaine has done fully custom decks in the past. A lot of people don't know that, but the Chinatown deck, uh, it's right there. Uh, that deck is fully custom. It's same thing with the Rip and Dip deck. So they have done it before. Um, and I guess technically the carrots, uh, but this, I think, was probably the best example of Fontaine really getting outside of their own comfort zone and doing something completely unique and very special. All right, guys, we're halfway there. So what's on the second half of my 2019 brick? This is one that you had to know was going to be on here, and that is the Black Roses Alt Rosa deck. Look, it matches my sweatshirt. That was not planned, but also, I mean, come on. Could you get more on brand right now? This is like some Nate Lex shit. I, I love this deck. This is also a deck that I was excited for because um, I got to do the first review and kind of a partial trailer uh, for this deck. Um, this was designed by my buddy Daniel Schneider who designs the Orbit decks. He also has uh, designed some of the court cards on the Slow Hands deck. Um, he's a really awesome guy and a very talented designer. I'm happy to collaborate with him. This deck uh, remains my favorite Black Roses deck so far. And the reason for that is it does have a pink colorway, which is something that I personally love. And I completely adore the customization on the face cards. That rusty pink on the hearts and diamonds, 
the perfect customization of the court card. I love every single thing about the faces and back design of this deck. As well, this was in my perfect brick in general. This is one of my favorite decks of all time. Um, I have gone through so many of these decks because I use it so often. What's number seven? In number seven, we have the Paperwave playing cards by Lorenzo Cobo and Paperwave. I will forever regret not getting more of these decks. Um, this is one of those decks I could see myself purchasing a brick of just because I love the design. I love that retro kind of synth wave feel with the black and magenta and blue. I also really love the uh, double borders on this deck, which add a layer of texture. And of course, anything that has pink hearts and diamonds is going to speak directly to me. So I love that they chose to do hot pink or magenta uh, on the hearts and diamonds. Very subtle customization on the faces, which really match the theme of the deck. And as well, uh, it's on crushed bicycle stock. So it's super thin, very soft, and just feels great. I love everything about this deck. And as well, I'm not counting the Paperwave Glyph Edition because those haven't been fulfilled yet, but um, I did get a chance to do an early review of the Glyph Edition playing card. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it down below so you can check it out. Also, big shout out to Lorenzo for uh, letting me do that review. That was super cool. All right, so number nine. Number nine, we are doing the Mono Zero playing cards by Luke Wadey. Uh, I made a lot of friends this year, uh, Luke Wadey being one of them. Uh, his decks are always super unique and very, very satisfying. Uh, this deck in particular, um, as of right now, is my favorite of the Luke Wadey designs. I love the way this deck looks and flourishes, even the simple ones like fans. I love the feeling of the Cartamundi E7 stock. I think it feels really, really good. And I love the face cards being all done in blue and keeping this kind of monochromatic theme throughout the deck. This isn't a deck necessarily that I'm gonna use every day to perform with, but it is a deck that every time I look at it, I wanna play with it. I love everything about it. I love the way it looks, I love the way it feels. I even love the shades of blue that were used. Everything right down to the ink on this card, I really love. So uh, Luke, if you're watching this video, very well done. This is absolutely one of the best decks of 2019, no doubt. All right, guys, we got three decks left in the perfect brick. Number 10 is the Red Fox playing cards by ECAT. So, Ekaterina is a very well-known uh, magician on YouTube. She's known for her product reviews and tutorials, and as well just for being a very talented magician and card flourisher. This specific shade of red looks perfect on a playing card. It looks so good, it really pops. It's not bright and gimmicky, it's more blood red like the uh, original King's deck. As well, I love the muted down red on the hearts and diamonds and the standard faces in general, making this deck perfect for magic. This deck is truly simple in all the ways you want it to be simple and custom in all the ways you'd want it to be custom. And I absolutely love it. It kind of like strikes me as like a Madison deck like that almost looks like Charlie Madison or something from, from a distance, but um, foxes I really like in just in general. But as well, I just, I cannot get enough of the uh, simplistic aesthetic of this deck. I use this deck so much. I had a half brick of them and I think I'm down to uh, one more sealed deck after this. So, um, Ecat, if you're watching this, uh, please. <laughs> number 11. For number 11, um, it was an easy decision in terms of uh, the deck, but just at the very last minute, there was new colorways, which made it difficult. But I'm gonna go with the Ace Fulton's Casino La Femme Edition, uh, but they have been redesigned with thinner borders and a new logo. I love the pink color of the back. Being that pink is one of my favorite colors, uh, I really love seeing a good pink on the back of a deck. It's also a casino style, which I really appreciate, and the uh, Arco faces on the deck really make it special for me. I love vintage, I love casino decks, uh, and I love pink, and this deck has vintage Arco faces, it's a casino style deck and it's in pink, so it checks every single box. Um, not to mention it's on extremely thin crushed bicycle stock. So these cards feel super, super snappy, but thin and soft and they're just so nice. All right, now remember these are in no particular order. So it's not from 12 down to one or one up to 12. This is just a perfect 2019 brick. So this is my number one pick, but it's not necessarily my favorite. It's just the last one in the brick. And that is the Bengali up your sleeve deck. If you watched my recent review of this deck, you know, uh, just by the excitement I generated in that video, you know how much I love it. 
Being that I just reviewed it, I won't get too much into it, but I really love the back design with the orange and black colorway. I love the custom faces. I absolutely love the paper stock. The aces are brilliant. I love the subtle customization on some of the face cards. Just this is a deck that has everything that I'm looking for in a deck of cards. One thing that I don't like about this deck is how expensive it is. It's like 15 bucks, I think, plus shipping or something. So, um, and this is not a deck that I received for free. This is a deck I paid for. Um, and I would love to own more of these decks, but they are so expensive. Right now, if you made it this far, then you know what my perfect brick of 2019 was. However, I do have some honorable mentions, and these are decks that I wanted to include, uh, but they either got edged out by this much by the decks in this brick, or uh, they were like a duplicate brand and I couldn't put them in there. So let's take a look at what those are. Honorable mention number one is the Svengali Forbidden deck. Uh, this was the first Svengali deck and it was absolutely gonna be in my perfect brick until the Svengali V2 came out. Uh, I love this deck. There's really nothing about it that I would change. I think it's pretty much perfect. I just prefer the new one a little bit more, which is why this one did not make it. My next honorable mention are the Orbit 7th edition and 7th edition parallel. I know the parallel edition had some, uh, it divided people a little bit. I loved both of these decks and I used both of them so much. I bought a ton of each when they first came out because I knew, I knew that I was gonna like them and I have to say that the V7 uh, is one of the best handling USPCC decks ever made. I love the way this deck feels. And now my other honorable mention is gonna be the Fontaine Guess V2 and V3. I love these decks. Uh, you could definitely tell that by my review of them, but the good company phased them out just a little bit. All right, I got a few more. My other honorable mention is the Gemini Cheetah playing cards. This definitely is an amazing deck. In fact, it is one of my favorite decks of 2019, but I couldn't put it in my brick because the Gemini Dazzle was my top pick, so. All right, and finally, the Hinode deck by my boy Diesel Illusions. I, I still love this deck. I like it even more than when I first got it. Uh, it feels really good. The borders are like the perfect thickness. Um, I love the way the deck looks in flourishes. I love using it for magic. It's just, it's a great deck. All right, I got one more and that is the OPC Snackers deck. And I'm only saying that because I love the yellow and red colors and because I'm drawing some hype up for the V2. All right, so that takes us through my perfect brick of 2019. That also takes us through uh, some honorable mentions of 2019. However, I do wanna say that I had a lot of favorites this year. I went through phases with a lot of different decks this year. But what I'm saying is if I had to put a time capsule of 2019 in playing cards, um, I would fill up my brick box with those 12 decks because those are the ones that stood out the most to me in 2019. Now let's talk about what we can expect in 2020 that I'm very excited for. Black Roses Hotel is first and foremost. I am super stoked for that deck. Not only because I got to be the king of clubs on that deck, which is great, but even before I knew I was gonna be the king of clubs on that deck, I loved the design. It's casino style. It's by one of the best designers in playing cards. Also the juice joint playing cards. Now those should be getting fulfilled any day now. Uh, that is absolutely preemptively going to be in my perfect brick of 2020. I was so excited. I did the trailer for the juice joints, if you, if you remember. Um, but I was just so excited about that project. It's kind of like a reprint of the Jerry's Nuggets, only, only it's presented by Doc's Playing Cards, which is amazing. It's just, it's absolutely incredible. So I can't wait for those decks to come. All right, guys. Well, thank you for sticking it out. I have a feeling this is going to turn out to be a long video, but hey, it's about your favorite subject, which is playing cards or else you wouldn't be here. Of course, now my question is, what were your guys' favorite decks of 2019? You don't have to put a full 12 decks in there, but just tell me what your favorite releases of 2019 were or tell me what you're excited about in 2020 down in the comments. Of course, I hope that's enough to get you to like this video if you did like it, and I hope you'll consider subscribing for more awesome videos just like this one. As well, I'm currently doing a giveaway and I will put the video somewhere in here right about now so you guys can figure out how you can win six decks of brand new playing cards sent to you by me. With all that being said, I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their day. I know I will. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Let's go.